What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shots React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. So excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, All right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. The current population of the country is just over 1.6 million people, of which it is estimated that more than half are under 18 years of age, a product of the fact that for cultural reasons, many tribal people have many children, many and children. also that many more move to study in other territories and then do not return. Now, Spanish is not the only language spoken. In fact, there are about 12 languages spoken in the population, ranging from the languages of the native tribes to a little French, Pidgin, or Peachy English, and of course Spanish, as a result of the fact that they were a colony of Spain for many years. Something I should mention is that visiting Equatorial Guinea, at least for me as a Mexican, is not easy. To obtain the visa, they ask you for too much information, even bank statements, how much you earn, why you are coming, where you are going to be specifically every day. And undoubtedly, what is most striking from the moment you get off the plane is the infrastructure of the streets. Mm. Unlike in many parts of Africa, at least the countries I have visited, here you see many paved roads, sidewalks for people to walk, and less dirt roads, at least in the region of Malabo, which is the capital. We should know that Equatorial Guinea is divided into two large territorial extensions, one being the island where we are currently located and the mainland, so-called because it is connected by land with the rest of the continent, where if you notice that some infrastructure is lacking is in public transport as there is practically none. People move around a lot in shared cabs and it is more than evident that you see cabs everywhere in the streets and also people are transported in shared vans that receive the colloquial name of 100 100. This is because they usually cost 100 francs, which is the currency used. But right. beyond that, if we are talking about a train, subway, or bus system with large signposted routes, that does not exist. And the methods for people to get to and from work are usually more up to the companies. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Up to the country. companies? That's something different. It is. I think a lot of countries <laughs> would like that. Yeah. Well, not um, countries, but the people. Yeah, so you guys have a huge taxi culture. Mm -hmm. um, but what language do you guys prefer? Do you rather speak Spanish or do you rather speak your native tongue? Native. Yeah. Well, I guess their Spanish is like our English, the main language that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm hmm. Now let's move on to what I know causes you the most intrigue about how Spanish is spoken here. What is the accent or what are the idioms? Well, roughly speaking, I have noticed that it is very similar to the Spanish we hear in many parts of Spain. The word tío is used a lot, KSAs, adonde vais, these kinds of details. But what's the use of me explaining them to you? We better talk to some locals on the street so they can hear it. Lo, yo soy de Guinea Ecuatorial. Lo curioso de este país es que es el único país africano que tiene como lengua oficial eh, el español, el castellano. Nosotros estamos muy orgullosos de ser un país de habla hispana, a pesar de ser el único en África. Hey, I heard that, for example, the sound of the R is strong. It is not pronounced. Bueno, depende. Hay una etnia que se llama Bubi en el que se registra mucho esto. La R en su pronunciación de la R. En vez de R dicen J. ¿Entiendes, no? Como pejo, pejo. Sí, sordo, algo así. Eso se registra más en la etnia Bubi. Yo, por ejemplo, soy fan y no se registra eso en mi habla. Me llaman guineano, me llaman guineano. Me llaman me llaman fogomba. Entonces, me llaman una vía chiva de mi nueva. Me llaman una vía chiva de mi nueva. aquí. Casi todo es compartido con España, pero tenemos eh, palabras locales como estar, what's up, what's up, es como decir, va? cómo va, qué tal. Ah, okay. Es en plan así, what's up. Saludo, what's up, algo por el Así, uh, man piquín de, man de. Uh, es en plan, uh, how you de. Man piquín de, es como decir, bienestar. El chaval está bien, dime, how. Mande, chico, we de la santa. Ya, sande, sande hot boku. Y el pobre, el Luisito, el equipo. Yes, el ella, el Luisito, el Luisito, el Luisito. Pues yo crezco en la ciudad de Malabo. They did the dab. Yeah, they did the dab that we do. Uh, oh, I like that. A lot, of, a lot of snaps going on after that. Um, so I don't hear an accent 
as much as he's trying to, uh, I guess it's going to, you know, pop out more in the video. But I do hear a lot of back and forth with the different languages. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially mm -hmm. with the pigeon as well. So I thought that's pretty interesting. Now, usually, do you guys address each other according to um, tribes or oh, yeah. uh, different locations when it comes to the languages? Or do you just speak it based off how you feel you should speak it, you know? Right. Because this was like a... Because Spain colonized it. Mm. I would love to know, like, the differences because we have been focusing a lot on the other countries that have been, you know, British and France, you know, was in those territories. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to know the differences here. Mm. I mean, you got to think about it being um, that the French came for us, right? And Spain. And Spain. And Spain. Louisiana, y'all. Yeah. Louisiana. <laughs> so when French came, we still have, like, that French uh, uh, speech, you know, mm. it floats yeah. around, but yeah. you is for us, it's barely anybody that you can, you know, you got to probably have like a grandma or somebody like that in your family that can speak it, yeah, or <clears throat> somebody that's like in close in relative, Cajun French, in Cajun French, but usually, like in just schools or just going on about to and fro, you don't come across nobody that can just up no. speak French to you on a norm, you know no. what I'm saying? It's, it's basically English all day, right? Unless it was like a French immersion program at the school, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. En la isla de Bioko y la sociedad en general ecuatoguineana es bastante acogedora para con cualquier persona que haga. Pues yo crezco en la ciudad de Malabo, en la isla de Bioko y la sociedad en general ecuatoguineana es bastante acogedora para con cualquier persona que hable español. Oh. Here behind us on the pedestrian bridge, we are watching we some freestyle battles going on. Sí, sí, sí. Este ya viene, pero no se entiende. Tú tienes de pasar por mi mente el grande como un continente. Ya, ya. Mira, esto ya no está mal. No, esto es literal. Yo te gano a lo literal. Ah, right, no, y'all gotta put that in the comment section. He ate or what? Like, did he kill it? Because we didn't get no subtitles or nothing for that one. Right, but we felt the energy. Felt the energy. Felt energy was saw, there. We saw the expression. Energy was there. Spanish rap battles in Ecuador, Guinean Spanish is something you don't see every day. He is good, Santi. He is one of the local big YouTubers in Equatorial Guinea. How are you, my Santi? Ah, muy bien. Un poquito ansioso, la verdad. <laughs> Esto ha sido totalmente... Me ha pillado por sorpresa. Siendo totalmente sincero. Hey, I'm very curious about the music that young people listen to. Here they are. More local artists from Spain, from other parts mm, of Africa. interesting. Actualmente todo lo gobierna los artistas nacionales. Que el drill está muy de moda. Los jóvenes escuchan drill. muchísimo drill, pero oh. si hablamos de la población media, vamos a decir 3, 25, 32 años, la mayoría escuchan afrobeat, música africana y música hispana también en general. If we talk about the architecture Boom, the... so you call that he said drill. They like drill music. That's different. But what he said is that they mostly <coughs> listen to African and Hispanic music. That's something that we have not heard a lot. When yeah, watching um, African content because we have heard that um, they listen to a lot of English artists, not mm. English. Y'all know I'm talking about like English speaking artists. No, I gotcha, gotcha. So, Equatorial Guinea is is different in a lot of ways. So, far. um, so I think I, I let, let's go this way with it because drill music has become this new thing mm -hmm. here and it has been mainstream right but we have these social media platforms where people are listening to so many different music because mm -hmm. of uh they just put it as a as the cover of their video right mm -hmm. but for you guys like how are you picking up on the drill music because is it more international as you guys can hear that way mm -hmm. or is it from like spotify from like a TikTok, um maybe from a certain social media platform that gives you guys that interest of drill music because here you can make the music and it can hit on SoundCloud, but would it get around as quick right. than it would on a radio? You hmm. get what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, so how is it making the waves? Yeah, that's that's an interesting one for me because I think I heard Meek Mill actually say something like that. He got backlash for it real bad. Right, that's what I was thinking when you said it. <laughs> yeah, no, real talk. But I understood where you was going with, like, how, how did they learn of drill music? But they have the drill music not just in the United States. Yeah, it's in the UK. It's yeah, all over. Yeah, but but at the they're same not listening to us. But you got to think about the times, too, as well. Drill made its its mark in the music. You know I what guess. I'm saying? In a sense. <laughs> like, there are certain states here in yeah. America that will say, hey, this is drill. Like, you're going to hear drill music no matter what. Right. So, that's an interesting one. Let me know what y'all uh, think about that. Here in the streets, I must say that I get a very colonial vibe in the historic center. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I were walking through Panama, through historical centers of Colombia, from I Venezuela. I, I came to know the largest market in Malabo, and you can find everything. Lots of secondhand clothes at very good prices, imitation tennis shoes, 
fruits, vegetables, lots of wigs and hair stalls. And the most unusual thing I saw is that they sell heads and bodies of animals like monkeys, hedgehogs, snakes, oh. others that look like opossums. And yes, you literally see the chimpanzee's head. There no. it should be mentioned that in rural areas of Equatorial Guinea, it is not unusual to eat such animals. And here you find right. them because there are a lot of rituals, a lot of tribal dances, and despite the fact that nowadays it is already something forbidden, there are a lot of legal holes there. Of course, they still exist. It is not a custom that will disappear overnight <laughs> once you leave the city. The landscapes are very green. There is a lot of nature. And in general, everything starts to feel more tribal and people speak less and less Spanish. Mm. In fact, the most commonly heard languages are Fang and Bubi, although it varies greatly. Oh, and something that I find very interesting is that on the roads you can see many abandoned cars because nowadays the registrations in this country are 90% written. There is still no great digitization of data. It is very easy to just crash, leave your car abandoned, let whoever finds it, find it. Small advantages or disadvantages brought by the lack of digitization. In many of these communities, it is very common to see these types of water wells that the community goes to for water. There are bars in every small town. There is going to be more than one bar. In fact, this is one of the countries that consumes the most beer because sometimes we just oh, pass by the only movie theater in the whole country that is very very funny. They basically show pirate movies. They tell me that some years ago they tried to do the legal business right, but as there is so little population and there is not really a culture to go to the movies, it went bankrupt, the owner got into debt, and today that movie theater, as well as other more street projection centers, what they do is that they look for links on the internet or even pirate DVDs and project them there selling very cheap tickets. The most popular sport here is soccer. This okay, so that's interesting. <clears throat> Not going to the movies. I'm thinking about trying to. I'm trying to think of my childhood and. Yeah. I loved going to the movies. So what? What are some things that you all like to do, like hobbies wise? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Nobody yeah. like to go to the movies. I'm pretty other sure. Other than pirate, I, watching pirates. <laughs> yeah, like just to put it out there to see what uh, other you know things you guys got to offer when it comes to activities. This is one of their stadiums. Recently, the national team did very well in the African Cup, but of course, the most famous Guinean athlete at international level is still Eric Zamboni, the swimmer who some years ago made a record time in the Olympics. Mm. The currency used by the four Guineans. It is the franc whose conversion at the date of recording is 1,600 to the dollar. This currency is used in several African territories, and until recently, the banknotes were printed only in French. Nowadays, English, Spanish, and Arabic have also been included. Yo, and the is issue nice. of the economy in Equatorial <clears throat> Guinea is somewhat complicated because in general it is a very new country, so the culture of working with office hours has been difficult to inculcate. It is very common that you arrive at a store at a store and the manager is asleep or has gone for a walk. <laughs> However, yeah. many migrants... Yeah, are da, 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 da. We deal with that. We deal with that. Especially if you ride around like 2 in the morning, you pull up to a gas station, and you see the, st the sign in front of that store, that person is out smoking on arresting, dog. Oh, on the phone. Straight up, all on the phone. <laughs> like, real talk. So, yeah, that's, that, that was a classic. That's funny right there. Senegal, Cameroon, even from Latin America. I have met several Venezuelans and Cubans, especially because there is a lack of doctors here. I'm mm. like you're an abogado and a dentist, because here no hay muchos. A dentistas no, Ajá, no suele haber. No, no, no hay muchos. Por eso, es pues, si es posible, hago un negocio de dentistas para ayudar a Guinea Ecuador, porque aquí no hay muchos. Since there is not a large percentage of the population with a university education, they have brought many doctors from Cuba who are well known to be among the best in the world. Soy cubano. Trabajo aquí en Guinea Ecuatorial. Soy ginecólogo. There are many Lebanese and Chinese because these nations have made large investments. Right. In fact, much of the popular housing financed by the government has been done by Chinese builders. Yes, that is a small country with a huge cultural exchange. A very interesting fact that could also become disturbing is that Equatorial Guinea has the longest serving government leader in the world today. 
Teodoro Obiang has been leader for about 45 years and there are rumors that his successor could be his son to keep power in the family. And in fact, as a foreigner, I find it very strange to see the president's picture everywhere. In every street, you are going to see spectacular, huge ones with his picture. Every business you go into is going to have him portrayed there on the front page. The man has even made his birthday a national holiday. It is known Words. as the birthday of the Equatorial Guinean leader. Yes, very strange for a visiting foreigner. This has been interpreted by many international media as a dictatorship. In fact, it is one of the countries that tops the list of least freedom of the press and I can corroborate this. Recording in the streets here is an issue, it is problematic. Mm. Cops are going to interrogate you, they are going to stop you everywhere. What are you recording? For what purpose? And in my opinion, this hinders the tourism sector a lot. That the way. fact that not much is communicated from here inside, despite having divine beaches, a biodiversity like in few other places, the country is visited by only 5,000 tourists a year. Or so says so, the official. I, I got a question. Would you guys want the world, the rest of the world, to see your beautiful country? Of through, course they would. Of course they would. Because, I mean, obviously there's a law. They don't want people to record or have too many cameras out recording their sceneries and whatnot. But to the, you know, the people of the streets, the people that's walking around, would you want mm -hmm. a lot of tourism, a lot of people to come through? And I think this is a good question to ask because you're going to have right. some people that's going to say no. Right, and you're right. going to have some people that say yes, they would love it. But I would love to hear their opinion right. on it. How do y'all feel about tourists? Because the lady said y'all are welcoming to... Spanish people that speaking. speak Spanish, people. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what about other people from other areas like us, like English? Yeah, you know, um, hmm. yeah, that's interesting. Um, so it sounds like I don't know everything he described, like about the president and things. It sounds like a dictatorship. But last video we watched of this country, it was like a five minute video, and it was yeah. just about the people, the beautiful smiles, their language. Um, the equator like it was about that but he's going into detail Charlie. yeah facts facts figure a sample of an excessive squandering of goods for show is right back there in a complex with 52 luxury mansions each with its own heliport which is completely abandoned huh whoa, whoa wait a minute <clears throat> i mean hold on I'm saying a sample of an excessive squandering of goods for show is right back there in a complex with 52 luxury mansions each with its own heliport, which is completely abandoned. All of these mansions are abandoned, really? That's what he's. This yes. is what he's saying. Yes. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not often you hear somebody like that. So I gotta really make sure I'm hearing this clearly. Um, Why? Yeah. What? What is the reason? What is the reason? Shoot, hey, y'all gotta hold it that like I did them theaters. <laughs> Ain't For no real. telling. Ain't no telling. Listen, bruh. You could do a lot with that. Sir. Living good. Come on, man. This was built some time ago yeah. when an assembly of the nations of the African Union happened with the idea that each leader of the nations would have his own oh. mansion for his entire team. Oh, wow. For wow. most of the time, it is a complete ghost town, and it is very bizarre that they are all entirely identical. It a massive nice copy gesture. paste that represents an so investment of millions and millions of euros. Although beware, as with everything, there are two sides to the coin. There are two opinions. There are those who say yes. This could be a dictatorship, but many more comment that the territory is doing very well without internal, tribal, or external conflicts with other territories. So in spite of what you might hear in the international press, if you talk to the people here, many will tell you that they are fine, that they are happy, that they don't see it. Big problem. I mention this because I consider it important to have a context about the territory, but I do consider that as in everything, there are two opinions, two sides of the Always. tortilla. Of the coin, two sides of the tortilla. I feel where he's going with that. Mexican. Mexican, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So here you have a little bit of Equatorial Guinea. Wow, I have been enchanted with this country. A very interesting mix of cultures and traditions. I have really enjoyed my days here. I hope to be back soon. See you soon, you know, in a few days with a new video. Bye. All right, yeah, we're going to stop right there. Make sure you guys check his channel out. He did a really good job. He really did. He did a really good job explaining and giving us more, like, 
what we want to see. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Oftentimes, people like this in front of the camera. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But this one took us out there, and I think it was good for everybody to see, especially being that they have a low tourism. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's more public here as well, too. So I thought that's pretty good. Yeah, I do um, like that they don't have any, like, inter-tribal conflicts and things like yeah, that. Yes, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't like giving my opinion on whether or not a place is supposed to be this way or that way. I'm not a governmental official. Y'all yeah. can't vote for me. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. <laughs> you know? I feel that. So, um, I mean, it does sound, to me, it does sound like a dictatorship, but they're not like other dictatorships that we have seen. Right, and you know? he, he didn't say nothing about English-speaking folk. Right. So <laughs> let us know how how, how 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 does that work, you know what I'm saying? Because we probably need, like, a translator, basically. Yeah, The maybe, entire time. Maybe to hear directly from Equatorial Guineans. It, it, it flowed. From it y'all. Flowed out. It flowed mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it came out right. I like it. Yeah, all right, y'all. We would love to dive deeper into your country. Let us know about your food, your people, oh, yeah. Yeah, interesting yeah. customs, traditions, dancing. We love dancing. Um, send all of those videos into our description box, our Hello. request form. It's Even here. the music. That's yeah. the music as well. The music. A little bit. Oh, child, when you say music, they just be like, okay, I got my homeboy <clears throat> to do this right here. <laughs> You're right. But th- he was rapping. Basically, it was right, a right. cypher, you know what I'm saying? So, And then they mentioned drill and then other music as well. So I like to see how you guys incorporate it. I like to hear right. it. Right. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace.